It is so good to be here with you today. If you're watching in your room or in your bedroom, thank you for allowing me to be with you in your room. I am really excited for today. I'm trusting that God is going to ignite something in and through your life today. I want to take a moment to honor Pastor Zane and Pastor Erica and Pastor Basil, my leaders. I thank you for affording me the privilege of sharing God's word with you today. I am really excited and I'm trusting and I'm expecting that God is going to speak to you in these next few moments. I want to talk to you about the idea or the thought of faith today. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Faith is the substance of things we hope for, the evidence of things we have not seen as yet. You see, faith is something that we can trust in God and put our faith in God. And I believe that some of us today are trusting God for the impossible. Maybe in your life, you're looking to God, you're looking to Jesus for the impossible. And I hope that today something will be ignited in and through your life. Let's take a moment and let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that we get to be here in your presence, God. I pray today, God, that each word that comes out of my mouth, God, would it honor you and would it fall on fertile soil, God. I thank you for these next few moments, God. Would you be with us? Would you guide us and would you speak to us? In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen and amen. I am really excited and today we're going to be talking about faith. And I want to read to you about this lady that's found in the book of Mark chapter 5. And she's been struggling with something for 12 years. And we're going to hear about this account and how she has faith in Jesus. And we pick this up in Mark chapter 5 and it says this, Mark chapter 5 verse 24. Just to give you a little bit of context from this scripture, Jesus is on his way to heal a little girl and there's a crowd of people following him. And this is what happens in in Mark chapter 5 verse 24. Jesus went with him and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, 12 long years. She had suffered a great deal. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors and over the years spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I could just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed from her terrible condition. Jesus realized that once healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said, look at the crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched your robe? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. I love this account. It's not just a story. It's not just a storybook, but it's an account. It's something that actually really happened. And I love what happened in this account where this lady has been suffering for so many years, for 12 years with this issue. And she heard about Jesus and she knew if I could just get into his presence, if I could just reach out to his cloak, something will change in my life and I will be healed. And today I want to title this talk, It Is What It Is. Maybe you heard this saying or you heard this phrase before, it is what it is. You see, sometimes we would go to give you a little bit of context of maybe you'd go to a restaurant and you order a burger or a wrap and you tell them, I don't want any tomatoes. I don't, I'm not a big fan of tomatoes. And you place your order and after you get your order, there's a tomato to your surprise in your burger. And you too shy or it's just such an inconvenience for you to go back and send it back. And you look at your burger and you say, it is what it is. You're a little bit frustrated and it's a little bit annoying, but you just accept the way it is. And you see what happens so often in our lives, we wake up in the morning and there's things that happen in our lives and we just come to the conclusion that it is what it is. This is just the way life is. This is just the way things are going to be. And we wake up daily and we're just so frustrated by what's going on, but we just accept it. That's what the whole statement, it is what it is. It feels like we just have to deal with it and move on. But you see this lady in the Bible, she's even nameless and there's an encounter that she has with Jesus that changes things forever. I think from all the people, she could have been one of them who said, it is what it is. I'm sick. I'm an outcast. Everybody looks down on me. I'm not allowed to be in public spaces with a bunch of other people. I've been suffering for 12 years. I'm financially insecure because I've spent all my money trying to go to doctors and people to help me. I've been pain. I've been bleeding for 12 years. It is what it is. 
But you see, she knew that maybe it is what it is. Maybe your situation, it is what it is. You might have made bad decisions or you might be in a situation that you're not happy with or something might be going wrong in your life. And it is what it is, yes. But she knew that Jesus is who He says He is, that He is our healer, that He is our redeemer. He is the one that can bring healing in her life, that it is what it is. Yes, that's the situation we're in right now. But Jesus is who He is. He is the one that can bring healing. He is the one that forgives our sins. So today I want to talk to you and give you three points about faith. So she came up behind Jesus. She pushed through the crowd and she reached out. You see, I believe that faith reaches. Faith reaches out. You see what happens is so often in our lives, we think things are so inconvenient. I look at this lady and it might have been so inconvenient for her. So inconvenient for her to push through the crowd. First of all, she was called an outcast, an outcast. And I'm sure they would have definitely brought so many insecurities in her life. She was called an outcast because of her issue. She wasn't supposed to be around people because she's called unclean. There was a crowd of people with Jesus and Jesus was on a mission somewhere. Everybody was following Jesus to see what he was going to do. And there was a crowd of people pushing around him. I'm sure she must have thought, man, this is such an inconvenient time. But she had a faith that knew if I just reached out to him, something will change. So she pushes through the crowd, through the inconvenience, through her pain, and something happens when she grabs hold of Jesus, when she grabs hold of his, of his hem. Something happens in her life and she gets healed. You see, so often in our lives, it becomes so inconvenient for us to sit online at church or press into God's presence. It becomes too inconvenient for us to seek God. We just sit back and we wait for Him to do something. This lady could have just said, it is what it is and that's my life. I'm just going to live with this for the next few years until I die one day. He could have said, I, it is what it is. And what could be your inconvenience today? What could be the thing that you need to push through today to start reaching out to Jesus in faith? You see, she pushed through all inconvenience. She broke all the laws and everything to get through there. Everything people told her she shouldn't do. She can't get close to Him. She heard of Jesus and she said, it is what it is. I've been suffering for 12 years. I'm in the situation, but it isn't what it could be or what it should be. I know if I get close enough to Jesus and I reach out in faith, something is going to change. And I believe when you and I start having a faith like this, a bold, a ridiculous and audacious faith, just to believe in Jesus, that it is what it is right now. But I know if I just reach out to God in faith, something is going to change in my life. So this lady reached out in faith and I believe that God wants us to reach out in faith. You see, so often I would get this wrong. I always thought that faith is about the quality of my faith. I need to have this polished, perfect type of faith. But I believe faith is about quantity. Jesus says that all we need is faith as small as a mustard seed. Faith as small as a mustard seed and we can move mountains with that faith. You and I need just a little bit of faith. You see this lady exhausted all her resources, all her money, all her time. And the last little bit of faith that she had left, the last little bit, she thought if I could just push through and get close to Jesus, close enough to touch His clothes, I will be healed. And I want to encourage you today that whatever you're facing or situation that has you backed up against the wall, it might be finances, it might be a relationship, it might be something that's going on in your personal life, a habit or addiction, or what people have said about you. And you've just allowed that to, you've just accepted that in your life. And you say, man, it is what it is. I'm just going to live like this. And this is just my life. I promise you, when you just start reaching out to Jesus by faith, just a little bit of faith that you have, something starts changing in and through your life. And the second thing, the second thought I want to leave with you today is faith receives. You see, she received healing. She got close to Jesus, close enough to touch His robe. And when she touched His robe, he, she was healed. You see, the amazing thing about faith is faith receives. It receives more than what we bargain, more than what we even go expecting. You see, she goes there and she expects just to be healed and disappear. But something happens. Jesus takes a moment to pause and stop. And I can imagine there were so many people pushing around him and maybe he got pushed a little bit on the side and he stopped the whole crowd and he was like, who touched me? And eventually this woman comes falling at his feet and worshiping him and saying, Jesus, I'm the one that touched you. She bargained and she just expected for her healing. But something else happened. She got to have a conversation with the Savior of the world, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You see, what happens is when you and I reach out to God in faith, 
We don't just receive what we come there for, what we expect and for, we get so much more. You see, God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And you and I can go to God and say, Jesus, I wanna reach out to you and I wanna receive the plans and purposes that you have for me. So I wanna ask you today again, what is the thing that has been stopping you? What is the thing that you need to have faith for in your life? What are you believing God for? Believing God for direction in your life? Are you believing Him for a purpose for your future? Are you believing Him to get into your university or the college that you wanna go to, or the new business venture that you've been praying for, or the relationship that you wanna go into, or the relationship healing that you wanna see happen, or whatever it might be. I believe when you and I start reaching out to God, when we start reaching out to Jesus in faith, we receive what He has planned for us, and it's so much more and so much bigger than you and I can even comprehend. And the third thing I believe that faith releases. You see, Jesus said to her right at the end, he had a conversation with her. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace, your suffering is over. You see the amazing thing, first thing that Jesus did is he reaffirms her identity. So many people might have called her outcast because of her sickness, because of her issue that she was facing. And maybe even in your life, people might have spoken down on you or categorized you because of the way you look or your skin color, whatever it might be. People might look down on you because of who, or what you look like or what you do or your occupation. But Jesus reaffirms her identity. He calls her daughter. And I want to tell you today that God calls you, Jesus calls you, He's loved sons and His daughters, that He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And then He continues to say, your faith has healed you. So she reached out in faith, she received her healing. And then he says, go in peace. He releases her. I love this thought that faith releases. Faith releases us into the purposes and the plans that God has for us and for our future. You see, God has plans and purposes for your life that will blow your mind if you just dare to believe in Him. If you just stop saying it is what it is, but it isn't what it could be or what it should be. When I just start putting my faith in God, I can promise you things start changing in and through our lives. This lady was at an inconvenience. She thought everything was over. She was in the most hopeless situation. For 12 years, she was struggling with this. And she thought if I could just get close enough to Jesus and touch His robe, I would be healed. And what are you having faith for today? What are you having faith for in your life? Are you starting to believe God for the impossible? Or have you just become so complacent, just sitting back and waiting for things to happen and maybe you just accepted the way things are. Maybe you just accepted the way things are in your life at the moment. But you see, God doesn't want it to just stay like that. God wants to bring change in our life, but He wants you and I to reach out to Him in faith and He wants us to receive what He has for us. And He wants to re release you into the plans and purposes that He has for your life. So I don't know where you are today and what you're facing, what circumstance or situation you might be in. But I believe when we start getting into God's Word and start seeking Him, things start changing. When I start, stop saying that it's an inconvenience, to get and press into His Word or it's an inconvenience because it's too difficult to get involved in a small group or get serving or whatever it might be. It's such an inconvenience. Or it's an inconvenience to trust God even sometimes. I wanna encourage you to that something would change. That you would stop saying it's an inconvenience or wait for the right time, but you would start saying, God, I wanna start reaching out to you. No matter if I'm pushed back against the wall or the circumstance or situation I'm in, God, I'm gonna reach out to you. I'm gonna push through the inconvenience. I'm gonna push through the crowd. And I'm gonna come close to you and I'm gonna to touch you because I believe when I get into your presence, something changes. I believe that one moment in God's presence can change our lives forever. One moment in His presence will start helping us to start hoping again. One moment in His presence starts bringing dreams back to fruition. I can tell you today that it doesn't just happen in the Bible days. It didn't just happen, Jesus didn't just bring healing when He was walking on this earth 2,000 years ago. He walked on this earth that you and I walked on and He died on a cross 2,000 years ago, a death that you and I should have died, a death that you and I should have bared. But He said, I don't want my people to suffer. I want to go to the cross and die on the cross for them. And in doing so, He died on the cross and for the whole of humanity, there was forgiveness. And He was raised three days later to heaven and now He's seated at the right hand side of God. And you and I have a plan and a purpose for our lives. 
but it starts with us saying, yes, Jesus, I'm gonna start following you. I'm gonna start reaching out in faith. I'm gonna receive the plans and purposes that you have for me. And I want you to release me into the destiny that you have for me. So I don't know where you are today and I'm gonna take these next few moments and we're gonna pray in a moment, but I wanna, I wanna make an a opportunity or a moment for you just to respond, not to my words, but to God's word today, that He wants you to reach out to Him, that nothing that you have done eliminates you from God. Nothing that you have done takes you away from God. Nothing that you have done may, means that you are too far away from the reach of God. You see, God loves you and has a plan and a purpose for your life. And He's asking you, would you reach out to me today? Would you reach out to me and receive the love and the forgiveness and the grace that I have for you and that I can release you into the plans and purposes that I have for you? So wherever you are in your room, in your bedroom, in your office, in your car, I'd like you to close your eyes and I wanna pray a blessing over you. I wanna ask for two responses today. So the first response is if you saying, man, I've never accepted Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior and my best friend before. And today you wanna make the commitment to start following Jesus. And the second group of people that I wanna pray for is those who's maybe become complacent in their faith, become so comfortable that everything seems like an inconvenience, that today, today something reignited in your life and you wanna say, God, I wanna start reaching out to you. I wanna receive what you have for me and I want you to release me into the plans and purposes that you have for me. So wherever you are, would you close your eyes? God, I thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Jesus, that you bore our sins on the cross and you died on the cross. And today we have freedom because of that, God. Today we have healing and we have a purpose and a plan in our lives because of that. I pray for each person today that's listening, God. I pray today that they would know that they're loved by you, that they're called by you. God, I pray that those who've chosen to follow you today, God, as their Lord and their Savior, as their best friend, I pray that they would know that they're loved by you, that you have a plan and a purpose for their lives. God, and I pray for everyone else that says, man, I'm tired of being complacent in my faith. I wanna start moving forward. I wanna start reaching out and receiving and being released into the plans and purposes that you have for me. I pray for them, God, that their faith will be reignited today, God, that you would come and do the impossible, God, that we would dare to believe the impossible in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Amen and amen. Amen. I told you this word would speak to you. A great word. Thank you so much, Pastor again, for sharing that word with us. If you made a decision today to recommit your life, or if you made a decision for the first time to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we don't want you to walk this journey alone. We want you to send your name to this number right now on our screen. Send your name to this number. We're going to leave it up here for a while so that you can write down this number, put it on your phone. That's our church number. Just send your name to that number and we will get back to you. You can WhatsApp it. You can SMS it, however you prefer. Just let us know that today you made a decision so that we can pray with you and we can walk with you. In this church, we don't want anybody to walk alone. We want everybody to walk together and we want to achieve something as a family. So there's a couple of next steps that are available to you as well. And we want to walk you through those. Firstly, Growth Track is back in church this Tuesday. It's in church, in person, but if you're not ready to come out in person, we've got it on Zoom as well. So just communicate with us and we'll be able to slot you into Growth Track. Amen. Church is unlocking in little bit and little phases. And like Pastor Zane said, we're doing it slowly and carefully. This Sunday at church, we would have seen the cafe open, the kids church open and our worship team back on stage. It's exciting to see what God is doing. And the way that you become a part of that service is just by showing up. You don't need to sign up. We are so excited that this is happening and we need our volunteers in full force. If you'd like to be a part of our volunteer team, message the church number. Let us know that you'd like to volunteer and we're able to get you in a team. We've got teams running throughout the week and especially on the weekends that need help. Thank you so much for watching the service. Thank you so much for being a part of New Life Church today. Remember to share this message with a friend because it could be the very message that changes their life forever. God bless you guys. Have a great week.